Okay, yes, so, hello. Uh, I, we do do this talk every year. This is the, last year you, you were seen as wearing Siemens colors, so this year it's Bay Libra, but we're doing the same stuff. Uh, yes, as, as uh, uh, to be said, we had uh, a little bit of internal drama when we all got laid off last year, but uh, still working on it. There's a bunch of us doing this. So a little bit start about who Bay Libra are, because we're advertising, obviously. And then moving on to the project stuff, we've got the uh, HPC stuff and the uh, uh, and, uh, internals update. And, and then at the end, we'll talk about the summer of code projects that were happening. Uh, but uh, we're a few minutes late, so let's get on. So uh, Bay Libra, you probably may or may or may not have heard of them. Uh, been around a few years now, but doing kernel stuff mostly. The compiler stuff is new. Um, and, uh, you know, so Bay Libra have been around since 2013, but uh, we've now incorporated what's left of the code sorcery team, which has been going considerably longer. Um, and obviously we've been here for years, so you all know us. But uh, yes, uh, the history is sort of, is, is up there. Um, the, uh, obviously our dream drama last year, uh, last year was Siemens decided they wanted out of all software, basically. They didn't want that. I mean, that's, that's fine, that's up to them, but we were rather upset about it. Um, and, but, you know, so about half the team have joined Bay Libre, the other half gone and done other things. So we have some openings. We are hiring. Uh, if anybody wants, wants to do HPC work or other random embedded tool chains, uh, please uh, let me know. Uh, we have senior and junior positions open. Uh, and uh, there's the possibility of a ski trip as well in France because HQ is in the south of France. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, it's a good place, small company. Let us, let, let us know. Uh, right then, you want and you want to do this one. I, I can do this one, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm Thomas Schwinge. I guess most of you have seen me before here. Uh, that's just a quick status slide of the uh, OpenMP, OpenACC offloading support in GCC. Uh, we have this slide every year, I guess, or similar incarnations. And not too much is changing on that slide because then, of course, behind each of these items are a ton of details. So OpenMP 5.2 means, I don't know, 600 pages of text or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so um, OpenACC support is still at 2.6 level, which was released uh, five years ago or so, or even more by now. Uh, work in progress is on uh, 2.7 items that we're currently implementing. Some of them are already in GCC mainline. OpenMP 4.5 is fully supported, I think or maybe some small exceptions, as everywhere. And the later revisions are also in progress. Um, 6.0 is the hot new thing, and I guess work on that will be beginning at some point. There's a nice um, page where, where all the individual items are laid out and their implementation status. Um, Open ACC, Open MP offloading share a lot of middle end lowering code and runtime library code. Um, um yeah then uh, right for for openmp there's of course the traditional kind of openmp shared memory cpu parallelization stuff that is not yet available for open acc could do that but somebody needs to send the patch basically <laughs> okay then we have code offloading amd gpus which um compiles to a specific instruction set um and there are several variants that we have listed here one has recently been removed from GCC because that's out of support by, by AMD for, for a time already. The Fiji GFX803, the other ones on, on that line uh, were supported before and new for GCC 15, or some of them are already in GCC 14, yeah, um, are a few consumer level cards and other items Andrew will go into a bit more detail later on. Then for NVIDIA GPUs, um, we compile to generic PTX, which then can basically run on N any NVIDIA GPU via just-in-time compilation to the proprietary NVIDIA backend uh, language. 
Right, and the important thing for GCC is that C, C++, and Fortran support for OpenACC, OpenMP is mostly developed in lockstep. That's different from the LLVM, Clang, Flam, Flang world, where Flang is way behind still. They are greatly catching up, but that's the good thing about GCC that you have most of the features available in all three languages. And that's just a quick recap of uh, offloading in GCC. Does that work? Uh -huh. So you begin with your source code, whatever language you have or whatever mixture of languages you have, run it through the front end, get a .o file out of that. Um, just as in your normal, normal host code compilation, the .o file contains embedded um, representation of the code regions that are to be offloaded to a GPU or other device, um, which just sit in this object file. And then when you run GCC for linking your object files into an executable, the linker sees that there is offloading code IR in the O files and runs the um, offloading code generation backends can be several, so you can have FET executables that contain PTX and uh, AMD GPU uh, code. And uh, right, that's running here, and then that's again transformed into a host object file, which then just normally is linked into the final executable here. And then at runtime, libgomp. Um, well, there, there are constructor functions generated for, for registering the host code um, at runtime. And that, when you invoke your executable, um, tells libgomp that there is offloading code for these and these functions available. And then it can probe which GPUs do I have in this system. And then when you get to the corresponding OpenMP, OpenACC constructs, launch the code offloading to the actual GPU. That's just a high-level overview in case you have not seen that before. Okay, then some quickly some generic infrastructure changes that went into uh, GCC trunk in the last year. Always miscellaneous cleanup and bug fixing. <laughs> um, we have some improvements for scanning offloading tree dumps, which is useful during development, obviously. We, I'm for a year already working on making C++ better supported in GPU offloading settings, so have some initial parts in, in, in uh, GCC trunk to make that more useful. Some yeah, probing stuff does not matter too much. And some, yeah, again, in internal stuff uh, where we were basically generating wrong code. And ever since we are added the offloading support 10 years ago, and now by chance I noticed that because when I run the test suite, uh, in, in .h mode, so to use a lot of CPU cores, um, and it turned out that when some test was running, there were still, um, so I don't know if you know that, the make, make uses some token system to distribute tokens which correspond to the, to the .h number, and then either you run that many compilations or um, basically the LTO system also can claim tokens to run LTO compilation in parallel, and offloading builds on top of LTO. And uh, so it happened that there were slots available and then we got some mismatch because variables were compiled uh, or used several times in these streams. So <laughs> kind of an unusual setting, but yeah, was fixed. And another bug fix to a bug fix, which also depends on a bin utils update actually. Right, then Tobias will go into more detail regarding the OpenMP changes, which is most of what we're doing recently. Yeah, and I try to get also some bit more feature size, so not having shown only these well tables, what done, not done. So I list some GZ14 items, attributes are now the thing. So that's actually one of the few new features, which is an OpenMP6 partially in there. Well, few other things which can be useful as well. And well, on the GC15 side, a lot of older patches are in there. And especially for Unroll and Tile, I want to show 
This can actually be used also if you don't use OpenMP, essentially. Oh, you have to use the syntax, but if you use the OMP SIMD, then there are a couple of commands which don't need the runtime library, so you can use it in principle in any code where you dare to add this flag. Yeah. Of course, like the name SIMD indicates there are other things which are actually enabled with this flag, but none of them requires runtime support and well, we otherwise go slowly through the list of new features and I was going to switch to some things which are in the works, partially already there, but need to be included. It's mostly meta directive, which is an older feature. In principle, it's being revised and being reviewed. I'll give an example a bit later. A bit, bit related to that uh, is something which is really work in progress. That's something which is called variant functions, which in principle are old, but there's a new feature in there. We talked about last year and above, but how to handle things. I come to the example in a moment and dispatch. So there's some related features I would just want to present in terms of the language and in getting support. So we have meta directives, which take, um, or one can decide an OMP Teams loop or OMP parallel loop as directive and then decide what to use based on some condition, for instance, that the device is an NVPTX offloading device. And there are a lot of features, some of them, which is also an OpenP 5.1 feature and with target device, which then asks for what you have as a runtime device. The same pattern, I mean, that's currently a bit under review. And finally, we try to get in to the new version is the clear variant, which exists in other syntax. I will show in a second here. But there's now the possibility that one says the claim begin end, begin end, and Sandra is currently working on getting the mangling done. And of course, the mangling depends. Uh, so with the clever variant, you just call a function, and then it looks at the place where you call it, which of them it should use. Can be also used elsewhere, and I think the variant of SIMD in the way it's also used for vectorization, so one can have some match, and then one somehow needs to encode this match in the mangled code and to make sure that it works. So that's one part. The other part, which I wrote there, was code illusion, which we now currently implement in a simple way. If you put a whole thing through the preprocessor, but then um, if you pass and you see this one can never be true, for instance, you disable this function, then the code is supposed to ignore everything until the action declare variant. So that's currently implemented. Um, of course, in the way, as we saw before, when Thomas showed the slide, so if you enable AMD and NVPTX, then all of this gets enabled because we pass only once, but at least the other things get excluded. And in any case, if multiple things can match at compile time, then the user needs to make sure that all declaration and so on, that they don't collide and are anyway available. I mean, since it has to be go to the preprocessor, this file has to be available in any cases. Well, that's one feature being worked on with mangling and this one, and the last one, which is a bit smaller and currently in here is kind of the normal declare variant syntax, where you declare the variant to the function coming directly behind it, and you need to make sure the names. New is that under certain condition dispatch, one can say, I don't want to have the context, so OpenMP wise, it has the context that's in the dispatch construct, or I don't want to have variant resolution, and it also supports saying, please convert these arguments, or to be precise, these arguments to the device version. Yeah, you have to map them first and then set a default device to that one. So that's kind of some features in flight. I just want to mention some other nice OpenMP features. So people like to combine code. 
they have the OpenMP code and then they want to get call some runtime, let's say CUDA or HIP or whatever function directly and they, they need to get the device number out. So they might not match of some handle and there's now a new feature interop, which is currently also being worked on, where one essentially says, please give me an interop object um, for, for the current device. In this case, if there's a device number, say, I'd like to have a CUDA object, and if I'm lucky, I get it. Um, check that I get it, and then I can get, for instance, a stream object, which has mm -hmm. then dependency, so such features are in and currently implemented. And well, now to the more or less status list, I start with compliance feature, so we, that's supported. I mean, there are some other features. OMMP 4.5, as mentioned, is essentially done. Recently, there was also someone complaining about some missing feature. The rest is also mostly done with the newer ones, but we have a larger backlog of patch review and revision. Um, and of course, a bunch of smaller features and two bigger features, which are not in the core, but a bit later, that's tracing and debugging. Especially tracing is useful for performance and very widely used. So big commission, debugging is seemingly not quite used and actually it goes on with the newer ones. So 5.1 essentially complete. We need some few things. So that was on the first slide work in progress. There's another patch posted and being worked on for some other things. So a lot of things done, but still, especially in these final stages, getting it in is things missing and for 6.5, it's a small release, so a lot of things is in there already. Mostly missing is the other features or the features we depend on, smaller things. And the next big thing in the room is the OpenMP6 standards, which had some technical previews before in, well, one and a half years ago, go half a year ago and very recently and will release for supercomputing. And that's, of course, a huge one. We have some minor things, like the attributes in there, but more to do. To make it really useful, there's this more implementation quality feature, so like unified chip memory, you don't have to support except syntax-wise, but everyone expects it. So there's something in GC15, we have both allocator support improvements, and but there's some Again, patch missing for some cleanup and or improving unified shared memory, pin memory, and also some cleanup work. And well, there's of course more things one could do. In the future, I think near term is get reducing the backlog, finishing work in progress items, small features, and then next, but of course depends on time, work, funding, and so on. Performance offloading, I think it's a big thing. Finishing 5.2, tracing would be good, loading features, and that's more or less what's mid flight. And Thomas wants to speak about OpenACC update. Right, so OpenACC support in GCC. Um, as I said earlier, um, not too much development going on because the customer or main customer is more interested in OpenMP these days. But as I mentioned, always again, miscellaneous cleanup and bug fixing and a number of OpenACC 2.7 features um, got in already. Um, I guess yeah, I can introduce them quickly. The self clause is useful to. If you nest compute constructs into each other, the self clause means to run this OpenACC compute construct not on the GPU, but on yourself, basically, so on the host where you're starting. Um, and in theory, can be used to parallelize at the host level using um, multiple threads, which is not currently implemented in GCC. So it's not useful per se, but still we need to parse it and handle it correctly, even if we then don't uh, apply the, the host side parallelism. And um, the read-only modifier um, means that, that 
uh, data transfer to the GPU is only read there and not uh, modified. So that means the compiler can do some optimizations around the data transfer and or use different GPU memory spaces for constant memory, things like that. Uh, Front-end support is in the actual interesting part to use that, <laughs> not yet. Um, right, and then the, the OpenACC has uh, structured and dynamic reference counting, um, which is different from OpenMP. So structured means when you enter a region, like uh, a block with curly braces, um, and there is a OpenACC construct attached to that block. That's a static reference counting because you enter at some point and leave at the defined end of block. And they, these can be nested, of course. And then you also have dynamic reference counting, which is when you have uh, pragma ACC enter data, for example, then that's a dynamic region because when that statement is executed, you do these memory transfers, for example, or other things. Right, and that patch cleared up some, uh, well, well, the patch, but the OpenACC 2.7 revision cleared up some mix-ups there or made that, um, yeah, unconfused some things. <laughs> Further OpenACC patches are in development uh, and will be coming hopefully still in GCC 15. Then uh, I will continue with the NVIDIA GPU support. Um, and first highlight that this is us working on that mostly, not NVIDIA, even if it, there's an NVIDIA logo there, that's just to highlight the <laughs> GPU, but, and recently NVIDIA actually started contributing to that, so that's great. Uh, we'll highlight that in a later slide. Um, right, and it's not only us working on that, but also other GCC contributors who find the N NVPTX backend useful. So, and again, miscellaneous cleanups and bug fixing. Then I, as I said, I'm working on the C++ support. One thing was to use the usual uh, weak declaration thing that, that the C++ front end uh, kind of would like to behave uh, correctly. Um, that's not yet useful for offloading code, but what I need to do as part of the C++ work is run the NVPTX code generation as a NVPTX target in GCC. So like when you have an embedded target and compile to your, I don't know, uh, MIPS chip, for example, if anyone still remembers MIPS. <laughs> um, and then you, you use some loader to get that on your bare metal target, run the GCC test case and get back some um, uh, good or bad test result and we use that obviously to test the compiler for correct code generation and all these things. Um, and now if I work on C++ support I would want to be confident that the C++ front end, middle end, lowering whatever comes is behaving correctly. Um, and for that run the usual GCC C++ test suite um, because if I only test the offloading setting, um, I have to basically replicate all the C++ constructs that we would like to support in offloading. And when I, on the other hand, as I just said, use the standard C++ GCC test suite for NVPTX target, then I basically get the checking of the code generation for free. Just that it takes a lot of time to go through the test results. And if we have, if we in the NVPDX uh, backend do non standard things, we have a ton of fails or need to adjust the test cases for that case. So it's easier to actually make NVPDX behave the same as other targets. And that's one piece here. And then Roger did uh, a lot of uh, smaller kind of fixes and some bigger ones to review still and more in the pipeline to basically improve PTX code generation on a high level. Um, right, um, so that's another thing I worked on just to basically clean up the <laughs> C++ test results. PTX in the implement implementation that we have does not support global constructors and destructors. Um, so in C++ obviously when you have global objects and need something constructed before entering the main function, you need that support or um, when you use the attribute constructor 
things. Um, so that was missing. Um, I had some first implementation using the old Collect2 executable from the 90s in, in GCC. Um, yeah, that turned out not to be the optimal way, so I re-implemented that and have now uh, have the linker figure out the global constructors and destructors to call and inject the appropriate things. And that greatly clears up C++ test results, as you can guess. And then also use that for, for offloading, um, where that is useful to <laughs> Um, switch libg fortran out of the minimal mode that we had been using before which did not support any IO and the customer uh, was requesting that they would like to have the ability to use printf or corresponding fortran thing for debugging in offloaded code regions which did not work for ptx because we could not compile some libg fortran source files for the io stuff because they did depend on global constructors to set up the libg fortran state so one thing required the next thing and that kept me busy for a year i guess <laughs> but that's now all working Right, and uh, next thing is to make al symbol alias support work with NVPTX. Um, I put in uh, recently a bug fix for one thing, and then so PTX, the PTX is a kind of a high level assembly le kind of language. Uh, it does support some symbol alias support, but it's very limited. It can only alias functions, not other variables. And you cannot have an alias to an alias, for example, which easily happens internally to GCC even. Um, and yeah, a lot of other things. So uh, looked into that and other people also made that comment before. Maybe we should not actually use this alias PTX um, support, but instead change the uh, NVPTX linker to resolve at link time the symbol alias information because then we have a global view of the program that we're generating and, and then can rewrite the symbols so that we resolve to the proper aliases. This also turned out to be more complex than anticipated, so that's what I'm currently working on. And that's maybe also a comment to make the uh, NVPTX support in GCC does not use bin utils like you would normally do for assembler and linker, but uh, there's a separate package called NVPTX tools, um, which our team wrote when we started the GCC offloading support 10 years ago. Uh, Right, that's that. And then actually now Pratamesh of NVIDIA, is he here by the way? I don't think I've met him before. Ah, hi. <laughs> um, he has recently been working, or recently a few months I guess, uh, on enabling uh, um, the NVPTX offloading case for ARC64 hosts. Um, which had a number of issues, so there, there was an anal analysis email of what's all going wrong, and then out of that fell these several patches listed here. Um, because the ARC64 host has some properties that are different from the x86-64 and PowerPC LE-64 that we used or supported for offloading before, so there were some changes to do. So that now, I guess there is one patch missing in review, um, but otherwise that is now working and that means you can use the latest flagship NVIDIA Grace Hopper system for GCC offloading, I guess. That's what, what you have been targeting with your enablement, I guess. Yeah, so that's great to see NVIDIA actually contributing to the GCC NVIDIA GPU offloading support. Okay, and that's all I had here. Then Andrew will cover the AMD GPU support. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, so, yes, more, more GPUs, sorry. There are, only two, there are only two, I promise. Uh, so there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, AMD activity, really like proper engineering in the back end, mostly because of the corporate drama that we already mentioned I lost about. 
lost about four months worth of access to the devices that we had, uh, so that would made that, and also obviously AMD changed their uh, focus a little bit on tool chains, and we, uh, yeah, anyway, so um, I haven't come back with a whole list of things that I want fixed this year like we did last year, like the vector either doesn't work, but um, on the plus side, while the, we had no access to our compute devices, we did manage to um, acquire some consumer devices to play with, which we'd been putting off for years. And uh, so now, finally, we do support some consumer devices. Uh, so if you have any of those four, uh, then uh, you're in luck. Uh, that's uh, the, the, the 90C support was actually added by Frederick uh, um, Harworth. Um, so thank you for that, Frederick, wherever you are. Um, and uh, yes, the uh, thank you to uh, Richie for testing the uh, uh, RDNA 2 ten devices, and uh, um, and, the, and and we had some the the RDNA 3 devices in house. The 1100 is a proper GPU. The 1103 is literally this laptop. So, <laughs> uh, it does work, although you do have to start it in uh, no graphics mode to run the test suite. Otherwise, your computer it crashes hard. Um, but you know, you could do it. Um, there is one removal. Yeah, the uh, really old GCN3 device that we started with all those years ago, like 2017, is now discontinued. There's no more hardware. There's no more hardware support in the drivers. And it was deprecated for GCC14. Um, and I've just, a couple of weeks ago, removed it from GCC15. Uh, and also all of the, uh, the back-end um, support for that ISA completely. So nobody tell me they want a GCN3 device now, please. Uh, this is the list of patches that have gone in. Uh, I'm not going to list them all, but um, yeah. Well, the VGPR stuff went in uh, about this time last year, so that supports the extra, extra registers that um, the really high-end devices have. XNAC mode is for the memory management stuff. Um, it allows um, uh, loads to be interruptible, which is turns out to be an important thing when you have page tables. Um, and the, the consumer device stuff. Uh, the preferred vectorization factor, because uh, consumer devices have half size um, vectors compared to the compute devices. Um, we do run them in compatibility mode, but you don't always get um, perfect um, performance that way. Uh, and uh, yes, so we did get, when I've been adding these things, I did get a number of emails. Why don't you just support all the devices? And the short answer is it's non-zero effort to add it, and I can't test it. I don't want to add it. Um, the way that the drivers work is they refuse to work if, the, if it isn't compiled specifically for that exact device, but unlike the NVIDIA, which is kind of, it's got a... Um, a finalizer in the driver. Uh, so, but if now that we've crossed the hurdle of adding support for the RDNA devices, uh, if there is a device that you would like to test it on, you know, patch is welcome, or um, uh, or just willing to test it, then let me know, and I can see about adding the magic numbers and whatever into the tool chain and fiddling with the metadata and all the stuff that you need to do to get a new target. Uh, as long as it's not too much effort, um, it's not kind of primary role. But um, it would be really nice to build out the support now that we can do our DNA stuff. Um, it's uh, so that's mostly the consumer stuff, laptops, um, games, machines, whatever should work now if we just add the magic numbers into the toolchain, add the multi-lib, whatever. Um, and uh, back back to Tobias for the. Next talk. Thomas. Oh, it's Thomas. Is this on? Yeah, I didn't turn it on. Okay, so um, for the first time, actually, we got some Google Summer of Code students um, wor working on on uh, projects related to to the code offloading support, roughly, or other things, as you will see. Um, two of them. The third item here is outside of GSOC, but a project from GSOC. 
So the first one, Georgi, is working on um, setting up infrastructure to be able to test the offloading flow through the compiler and runtime library in particular, runtime library, um, if you do not have a GPU available. So standard laptop without GPU, if such a thing still exists today. <laughs> well, without a GPU supported by GCC, then this can be useful for testing um, data movement across host and device and kernel launches and all these kind of things that depend on having a GPU or uh, emulation kind of a GPU. So this currently works by forking uh, when when you launch your, you, you compile your OpenMP, OpenACC code, just like you always do, and then run it. And then libgomp has several plugins, which it probes. Do I have an AMD GPU that I support? Yes, no, no, I don't. Do I have an, an NVIDIA GPU that I support? No. Uh, and then I have another plugin called host process, I think. Um, and that is always supported, obviously, because it does not depend on anything um, special. And then this forks the process, and then you have a communication between host and your device, which is then the forked process. And that way can test the libgomp offloading support. Um, there are a lot of details there again, but um, uh, a good part of the libgomp test suite passes. The other part is more difficult to make work. So I think that won't happen as part of this Google Summer of Code project anymore, but it's still a very, very good first step to making that work. Because what happens occasionally is that um, somebody commits something in GCC and accidentally breaks something in the offloading support. Um, for whatever reason, not intentionally, of course, um, and then has no way to, well, maybe has a way to fix it, but has no way to, to test uh, what that person is doing. Um, and this can enable such, such a thing without a lot of overhead. Right, that's this project. Then Tobias can maybe cover the next one quickly. By dealing with the, mic. Uh, the first part is really a Fortran thing, so do concurrent. Uh, that's essentially only a compiler that the code could be in principle run concurrently, and what was not yet implemented of Fortran 8, 2018 and 23 features were to tell um, information to the compiler what to do if one really wants to run it, uh, run it concurrently. So let's say factorization or whatever means. So they added localized, as they call it, um, like local, local variable, but initialized shared variable default none. So that one really has to specify things, and the newest thing was reduction, and that was not yet implemented in GFortran. So, and we started out with adding parsing support and handling all of this. Um, it's mostly done on the parser side, diagnostic, and so on. But um, well, so patch is nearly ready, waiting for a few additions to the test suite. But then we have. A mostly working Fortran part, the goal, which won't be done during this summer of code, unfortunately, is to go to real parallelization. So, for instance, to turn that one into OpenMP parallelization, or ACC, potentially even with offloading, um, either by using a flag, or the alternative would be the OpenMP 6 version, where they support OMP loop on the concurrent but at least the basic steps of the base language will be there. And well, that's this part of the project. And now let's go to merging the previous talk and the OpenACC topic in a way to a static analyzer. Right, yeah. So that, that was something we had proposed as a possible Google Summer of Code project to take the GCC static analyzer and add checks for OpenACC constructs or directives or OpenACC runtime library calls, so you can basically do 
call ACC malloc to get device memory and ACC free to free that. And of course, you should not mix up your host and device pointers and you should not free after free, even your device memory, even there that doesn't work and other such things, um, which is already supported in the static analyzer for host code, so for standard malloc and free and all these things. Um, and the idea was to extend that for OpenACC or for device memory generally. This might likewise apply to, to OpenMP then. To teach the analyzer that there is a difference between memory you get from malloc and memory you get from ACC malloc. Um, and then all the checks that follow after that. So that's uh, Vedant approached me outside of Google Summer of Code. We had proposed this as Google Summer of Code project, but he um, did not get a, a slot for Google Summer of Code project. Um, but he would like to do this for his university project or th thesis something. So I said, yes, why not? You don't get money for it, but still happy to do the work, of course. <laughs> Yeah, but and that's uh, uh, well. If if anybody knows of any students who would like to do such smaller projects, we now have a small list of them. So happy to do some mentoring. Of course, I also have to do my regular work, or all of us do. But I like to introduce new people to GCC development, and that's one way of doing that. Right, and that's the end of our presentation. Um, there are some. BOFs, which also relate to these topics, obviously the BOF on the very same topic, the first one listed here, that's after lunch today, and then vectorizer related today, vectorizer BOF, and the LTO and so on BOF also happens to talk about offloading topics every once in a while, because as mentioned earlier, the offloading code generation builds on top of the LTO infrastructure in GCC. Then, thank you for your attention and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I'm um, Barish Akdemir from INTA. What level of debug information do you generate? For, for which target? For, for any, I mean, for AMD and I mean, for GPU in general. Uh, so for AMD, we have fairly basic support for debug. In theory, as long as you um, use the no emit frame pointer, then you should get frames and you should get uh, basic variable support. The, the the optimization will break things for you. Um, the, the the vectors and stuff it doesn't understand whether the, when they're masked and stuff like that. Um, but in theory, you should be able to start it in a in Rock GDB, the one that comes with the drivers from AMD, and it should do the right thing. So if you say disassemble in main, it'll give you x86 code. You say disassemble inside your kernel, it'll give you AMD code. It's um, they, they've done good work, and uh, Pedro's in charge of putting it in the Dwarf standard. <laughs> um, um, and we have not done extensive um, projects to um, enable every little corner of that, but the, the, the basics are there. It does work. And there uh, was a presentation two years ago, I think, for... There is, there is a, demo, a recording with a demo from the um, cauldron that was um, on, on the Plumance Plumbers thing a few years ago, mm. which you can find on YouTube. And uh, I'm sorry, it's... Um, it's my video editing skills, it's not great. But it, it was great to see you step in GDB or rock GDB through host code and then hit some OpenMP, OpenACC offloading constructs, step into that and then just continue stepping through your device code. It's funny but when you say, it's funny when you say info threads and there's like a thousand threads. That's great, that is. And um, so that's AMD GPUs, and for NVIDIA GPUs, we have some very limited support of emitting dwarf directives as supported by PTX. So that's, I think, basically just location information, but no, nothing else really. 
Um, and I admit I have not really used, used that so far, but in theory, you should be able to compile your code with dash G to generate debug information and then use CUDA GDB to step through the things. Uh, do you have any performance numbers you could share on how well you know the, the offloading works for compared to the proprietary solutions? These numbers do not yet look too great for most cases. There are uh, benchmark codes where GCC is up to par to proprietary uh, vendor compilers. Um, yeah, there is work to do there, definitely, and hopefully we will have some projects upcoming to work on that. We have ideas what to improve, where the problems are, or how to find them. Um, yeah, so if there are people, customers, whatever, who would like to fund such work, we are very happy to do that. Yeah. Well, and maybe one additional comment, so that's not an inherent, well, it is kind of an inherent problem that this is difficult to generate performant offloading code, um, because a GPU is a very different target than an embedded or standard x86 whatever chip, um, but also what happened is that the customer priorities so far have mostly been to get the functionality working, so to implement the OpenMP and OpenMP, uh, OpenACC standards. And if that already takes up most of our time, then there's not much time left for performance tuning. And it's also a bit intrinsic, so one has a lot of levels of prioritization, so one needs to use them very well. And if, I mean, it's Amdahl's law, if there's one serial part that dominates then a lot, so one kind of, kind of fix one part to get really parallel and it's factor of 40 faster, but then of course all other parts dominate, so one needs to fix kind of all parts to get it and also the tuning how to distribute the data over these different levels of parallelization seems to be a rather tricky part in the automatic. And one sees also the other vendors are a bit struggling with that, so. Some have a lot of experience and have it then working well, then comes a new construct and might find in a corner case and there it completely fails. So, for maybe good for tuning, one needs to tune it manually, but otherwise, one can try to make the different parts faster. Maybe if we're stuck on this one, I found interesting that the LVM project they have on the offloading part now um, performance guided optimization tried. And seemingly, because of all the cost factors which are not really tuned for GPUs, the code got slower. So then you need to do a lot of studying about the cost to get the performance guiding optimization working. We currently don't have on the offload side performance kind of optimization, but could be also interesting to look into. Any more questions for Max? Suggestions? Otherwise, after lunch, we can discuss a bit more in the buff style. One floor up. Okay. Okay. Then thank you, Ken. Yeah.